chances are that you or someone that you know has had an MRI scan. MRI scans can provide hospitals with high quality images of a patient's internal organs. Oftentimes these images can tell doctors precisely what they need to know by for example revealing a tumor or stroke. But oftentimes these images can raise as many questions as they answer. A point in an image appears brighter or darker. We know that something is different, but what does it mean? My name is Benjamin Tandem and my research is aiming to help healthcare professionals understand what MRIs are trying to tell them. Just like a photograph from a digital camera, an MRI is made up of pixels. Each individual pixel can give us information about one cubic millimeter of body tissue. That's around the size of a poppy seed. A typical MRI will contain millions of these poppy seed sized pixels. However, the challenge that we face is one of scale, the size of things. Diseases are best understood at the scale of cells, or in the case of the brain, neurons. However, neurons are only a few micrometers across. Imagine that this is the length of our MRI pixel. Then this small piece of metal at the end is the size of our neuron. It's tiny. A typical pixel can contain around 100,000 neurons. That's a city of neurons with around a billion connections between them. All that in the size of a poppy seed. An MRI will summarize all the information within a city with one single number. Now, that may seem a bit crude, but fortunately MRI provides us with many different ways to summarize our city. Think about how you would summarize a city of people. You could calculate the average age, weight, or income. Though this wouldn't give us information about any individual citizen, it can help us assess the overall health of the city. Similarly, MRI can provide us with lots of different measurements which can help us assess the overall health of the city of neurons. The challenge is how to interpret that in relation to disease. So we're taking a slightly unusual approach. We're scanning the brains of people who have died and have generously donated their brains to medicine. Now, this isn't a real brain, but it is a realistic replica of one. It's quite an amazing thing to hold a human brain for the first time. The brain is surprisingly small and delicate. This amazing organ contains all of our memories, our quirks of personality and our opinions. And when it gets sick, it can change our lives profoundly. By scanning brains after death, we create a unique opportunity as we can compare MRI scans of this to this. This here is an exquisitely thin slice of human brain tissue which we can look at under a microscope. With this, we can examine the neurons of the same brain that we scanned with MRI. And that means that we can quantify how many neurons, the size of the neurons, and the other cells that support the neurons. And by doing this, we can map the relationships of how neurons relate to MRI scans. Now, I'm not actually a neuroscientist. I'm a physicist. So normally you wouldn't find me in front of a microscope, but in front of one of these. I'm aiming to use our understanding of physics to help us map these relationships to these dramatically different scales, to see how cities of neurons can provide us with a rich set of MRI signals that we can use to further understand disease. And we're throwing in a bit of artificial intelligence to map these relationships. Also, we can understand what MRIs are trying to tell us in order to help doctors diagnose and treat brain disease.